I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by uh, Craig Venter. First of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time, busy day, to talk to us. My pleasure. Book signings uh, galore. Yeah. So can we uh, get right to the heart of the matter? What, what implication for cell biology, for studying your cell biology or uh, synthetic uh, biology? Well, when we're designing genomes, the end result is to get new living cells uh, that have the function that was designed and programmed into the genetic code. So cell biology is the, uh, uh, the obvious uh, outcome because we're trying to understand the correlation between all the programming in the genome and all the functions in the cell uh, and how by changing the program we can change those functions and outcomes. So we're redoing and rewriting evolution, uh, but we're doing it from the point of view of uh, writing DNA software. It's kind of a big leap though, isn't it? Because you, you, you're talking about reprogramming uh, evolution where we're talking previously, we're talking about maybe studying cells and, and trying to understand how things work. And now you're actually talking about not just doing that, but moving on to changing potentially how things work. Well, the things go together. In fact, science is moving so slowly in some of these places from the way it's funded to funding you know, one lab at a time with lots of replication to by being able to test by writing the genetic code and designing things, we're going to understand the functions orders of magnitude faster than the way we've been doing it. So I think it has implications for every part of the cell biology community because if you change the perturbations and however people are looking at it, whether it's with microscopy or anything else, uh, you can see the actual correlations between that genetic code and that cellular function. Does it, have, it must have big implications for the whole kind of education system, for the whole kind of way universities and research is uh, kind of set up? Well, it changes, changed my view of how life worked, uh, finding out that life is a DNA software program. We're DNA software based uh, programs, right? And uh, finding that you change the software and you change the species uh, kind of changes dramatically how biology is taught. But young people get it. They've right. grown up in a digital world. And the fact that we can exchange the digital world and the biological world readily now is pretty intuitive to them. Let's talk about some of the kind of implications of it and your, your work in the kind of real world, if you like. What, what, give me some practical examples of, of, of how things are changing. Well, in terms of trying to change one or two genes at a time to get a new function in the cell, we can reprogram the whole cell. So that's what we're in the process of doing now. We've designed the first cell completely in the computer. Right. And we're now building that chromosome to in fact see if our ideas are right. But it becomes very testable now in a way that even a few years ago people couldn't imagine. If you want to know the functions, you just rewrite the new program and see if things work. Do you get life or you not get life? Uh, and, and that's at the gross level, the fine level, uh, we have to understand every component in that software code uh, and how it turns out on the cell. So what are you working on next? Well, we have uh, 300 scientists at the uh, Venter Institute working on everything from the human genome to the microbiome to synthetic life uh, at Synthetic Genomics. Uh, we're working on designing all kinds of cells to using these tools to create new sources of food, new sources of chemicals, uh, new sources of medicines, uh, so uh, the implications of this are very broad and we're trying to show it uh, across the board. Are there any kind of ethical considerations here? I, I mean there are in every aspect of science, but uh, we had an ethical review of our work before we even started. It's a, a historic precedent for that of, you know, is it okay to make new uh, life forms right. in the laboratory? Uh, President Obama's Bioethic Commission took this on as their number one challenge and uh, you know everybody came down on the positive side of what we're doing and how we're doing it uh, uh, is a good way to go. Give me, talk me through the work that you're doing with vaccines at the moment because that seems to me particularly fascinating and a, a, a kind of real world example of, of progress that you're making. Well working with Reno Rapali and Novartis uh, we came up with the uh, first meningitis B vaccine, but that took 17 years, but it's now just becoming available and it's uh, being used even if it's only it's approved in Europe, it's used to treat this outbreak at, uh, uh, at Princeton and now in UC Santa Barbara. Uh, so 
we look for ways to have vaccine development go faster. And by writing the genetic code, we can make a new flu vaccine uh, prototype molecule in about 10 hours. So it's converting the digital information in the computer uh, back into making real molecules uh, that can be used uh, for vaccination. Final question would be, it's already an exciting area of science, but, but your work must make this even more fascinating for young people coming into this today. Yeah. No, it's, it's a nice thing, the feedback we get everywhere. It's, it's in part because of uh, young people growing up with every digital advice. Uh, uh, you know, o older people sort of struggle uh, with these adaptions. When you grow up in a digital world, the fact that biology is interchangeable with that digital world makes it intuitive for them. And uh, uh, there's a lot of excitement. You know, I, it gives me a lot of hope for the future because all these uh, young people now being energized by working in synthetic biology because they can relate to it in a way they never could with the way biology was taught before. Sure. Well, first, thank you very much indeed for You're talking welcome. to us today. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks. Thank you.